Uh, maybe I'm gonna let the boys fly because every show they let me go up and I'm so afraid of heights and and every time I'm swinging on some swing or they have me uh, <laughs> you know uh, I'm going up in the air on some you know belts and stuff like that so it's like <laughs> I'm glad if I can keep my both feet on the ground this time Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Sharon, thank you so much for your time. I know that these are extremely hectic uh, days for you and everybody wants to talk to you and it's busy, 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 busy. You're back to back with interviews. The album is out for a week now as we're talking. Um, this was a very different release for you, um, given that now the band is fully in control as an indie band. But it's also, you know, this is far from your first release. Like, is this same old, same old, or did you really feel the difference? Well, there was a difference that we could uh, release in the moment, in my opinion. And like where in the past, our record company would say like, okay, you can have two or three singles before the album comes out. Right. And uh, and that was it. Then you had like two weeks of a two weeks time span. Everything was released. And then nobody talked about the album anymore. And now we've been yeah. releasing, of course, for three years, a little bit more than we wanted to because of the COVID pandemic uh, that mm -hmm. happened. Uh, we wanted to stay in contact with our fans and to keep ourselves busy that we released way more singles than we initially had in mind. But we were very flexible and that's something that I love with this new way of working that we are independent. We can decide ourselves when it's important to re release a new single or not. When it's worth dying for and you would give Well, I think it was also Robert who said like, you know, there's certain themes that are that we deal with their songs that are you know commentaries on what's going on in the world and we don't want to be delayed with that so question i have for you um how much more do you have to then focus that you touch on an active thing in the world but in a vague enough way so that in 10 years from now it's still a relevant song and it doesn't feel oh that was a time stamp it was about that thing that's not happening anymore so the song is not relevant anymore you know you see what i mean like how, yeah, how do you make think, sure that it stays relevant well i think well the whole album i think if you would say what is the theme of the album and then there is really one that is really above all other topics is that, about freedom is it like a cry mm -hmm. for freedom and i think that's something that's always needs to be fighting for or we're fighting for and will always happen that there will be um you know that there will be the world will be changing in the future again and different situations will uh, occur but i think we'll always keep on need to keep on fighting for freedom uh, as we more than ever realize now also with the ukraine that we never thought that a country well that russia would ever attack a sovereign country like ukraine yeah which, uh, so uh, those things are is unfortunately of all times i guess and all the emotions that go with that is also of all times, even with past wars. You say a number of things I want to go deeper into, and I think some of that all started coming out already with the previous cycle. We obviously saw your headlining gig at Grass Pop two years ago, and where that was very, very present as well, for I think for the first time on a ma massive uh, scale and stage. I want to take you back just briefly to a similar show that I was also at, together with 80,000 other Belgians. I know that that wasn't the first big show you did because there was obviously some traction in the Netherlands, but when you look back now, that show where you were on the bill with, if I remember correctly, Rammstein, Bush, Nelly Furtado, Queens of the Stone Age and Red Hot Chili Peppers that day. <laughs> and, and, and But the whole crowd was singing along with this new band from the Netherlands that most people in the mainstream hadn't heard of before. When you look back now, like, 
that summer and maybe that show specifically is that the moment that everything changed for you guys well uh in belgium yes i think uh and maybe also for france in a way mm -hmm. um for us it was like uh like you said also we played on different festivals before that also in the netherlands and some other countries it was the whole i think europe discovered us then as a like more a little bit more like a like a like a real band instead of like a one day fly that we a lot right. of people thought probably we would be uh before that and uh it was really amazing and for us it did change that so we thought okay this maybe maybe this is really possible because also us right. we were not we don't have like a history in the netherlands that there's many bands that actually succeeded outside of the netherlands so mm -hmm. the music that we're making we can't be just focused on on the netherlands and belgium we need to go beyond that and especially beyond ne the netherlands it's just too small and especially with the niche that we're a little bit in i guess um but i, I guess it, yeah a lot of people it, it did appeal when it got a chance and that was nice to see because um people also thought because of the type of music that we were making that was was weird kind of music compared to all the other bands out right. there and, and even the, the you know the mainstream music so uh, for us to succeed was like a surprise to us as well <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it was the first sign maybe one of the first signs that we were able to do this for a longer time period than just a few years <laughs> You still played Enter as well in that set list, if I'm not mistaken. Oh really? Uh, wow! I, yeah. <laughs> we we didn't have it, my chance. <laughs> so it was it the was... it was the only time I heard that song live. I think. Um, oh wow! I've, I've seen you many times uh, ever since. Obviously, um, do you still? Because I know you you were doing that already, and I think in a recent behind the scenes interview for Dutch television, you brought that up again. Do you still collect all the backstage, pass backstage passes of all the shows you go to? Well, no, I give them to my mom. She actually collects every newspaper and everything we are in because she just wants to have this archive for, I don't know, her grandkids. And uh, yeah, yeah, so I yeah. give everything nowadays to her, but I have like, not exaggerating this many backstage passes and, and they do hang in my house like a, like an yeah, yeah. Early, uh, <laughs> like <an> ornament <laughs> exactly exactly you don't need a christmas tree you have a backstage yeah. pass tree fantastic <laughs> that would be actually a very good idea maybe i'll do that <laughs> hey. and we and i'm sure that all the fans would love to see also like within temptation christmas ornaments and stuff like that um yeah and hey now we know that in a few years the wooden temptation museum can open up to the crowd yeah we know <laughs> I'm gonna completely fast forward again to uh, that that show that I uh, that we saw you. It was the last time I saw you play. Was uh, you headlining? I think it was the Friday of Grass Pop in 2022. I think that yeah, uh, that thanks. was, um, which was um, I was looking. I was with that show with my friends, and we all agreed it was our favorite Within Temptation show that we'd seen. Oh wow! And it's interesting cool. because we've all seen you evolve. And if we compare that show in 2004 in Vechter when you guys were sometimes labeled Efteling Metal, which I think is a fantastic compliment, um, <laughs> and the show now, they're practically two different bands. Um, we see this new wave around the world of uh, bands that have clearly been inspired by yourself, you know, bands like, you know, Amaranth is out there, Ad Infinitum is out there. There's so many, you know, bands that are, you know, really, really knocking on the door, but they've also allowed to really use more modern approaches and evolve their music to stay relevant. And they clearly been inspired by, you. is that something that you look at? Do you have time to take a step back and look at what's going on in the scene? And do you, do you allow yourself to appreciate that a little bit? Uh, well, I must say that that um, I don't really look at it, to be honest. Uh, it's more like actually we are more uh, looking at bands that can 
that are doing other stuff that maybe we can be inspired by. So mm -hmm. uh, like metalcore bands, uh, mostly actually the, with the last album. And uh, because we're always looking for new things and uh, right. so we've done this, done that, and we love it. But, you know, we want to also stay relevant, like you said. Yeah. and always looking for new blood and new inspiration so it's 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 good for us to look at other bands than things that are similar to us uh, especially yeah. because um well that's what we've always done we've always looked to try out new stuff that's the, that's the thing that keeps us alive and still here i guess after yeah, 27. Yeah, yeah. so that is an active like thought process it's not that everything happens purely organic when you guys are entering the new phase you do say like okay let's let's have an idea let's look around yeah. okay yeah let's explore and ex but what do we like about certain music you know certain genres that because we are not making metalcore music of course but we are who we are in our dna we like we love heavy music but we also love melody work 80s kids and it will always be in our dna we'll never be the heaviest of heaviest bands right but no that's not our aim either we just want to make heavy music with with beautiful melody lines and and that's what we are trying to do. And then hope, finding new sounds from, you know, other bands who are also working with certain programs and getting to new ideas again. Like this time we, uh, Robert even, after, was Robert, I think, he was playing on the keyboard with a guitar plugin and he made like a crazy, crazy uh, melody on it. But then we gave it to our key, our, um, our guitar player, Stefan. Like, Stefan, can you make this song? Can you make this work on the guitar? <laughs> And he said, uh, for a big part it worked, but a lot of yeah. parts didn't, like because the hands are so different on the guitar than on the keyboard, for instance. Right. And they really had to transform certain parts and to make it really work. And he also called us like, okay, I can't really can't play this. It's great, but it doesn't work. <laughs> 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 I would like to do this. Is this possible? And they said, yeah, great, go ahead, man, and, and try out things. And and that's how we got to the guitar uh, riffs that we have now and yeah, the yeah. certain sounds that we have. Yeah, yeah. So, so Robert is not going to make a surprise appearance with a keytar strapped around himself. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. <Okay. laughs> he does yes. sometimes, but uh, it won't, it's not happening a lot anymore. You, you already mentioned, you know, the album deals with darker things and, and dark themes. And it. you're right. I mean, unfortunately, in a few years from now, the world is not going to be all rainbows, lollipops, and sunshine. Um, but those are not the only themes that you address uh, in a song like Ritual. I know that you've shared, oh, it's been inspired by movies from Dust Till Dawn, what have you. And it's about, you know, the leading lady taking ownership in a male dominated world. Sounds like it's, it's inspired by more things than just a movie. Um, That's true. <laughs> so, uh, so, so the, you know, if we, if we dig a little deeper, uh, we find more personal stories in every song. Uh, well, the thing is, this, this started out as a fun track, not as a, as a track that was very serious, but more like it was just a very sensual song. And yes, yeah, thinking about okay, what kind of you know, it, <laughs> it felt a little bit like Winning Station goes very white, and uh, so it, but then with guitars and everything and steroids, we have the quote and, of uh, the day. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, very strange comparison, but it was a sensual song. And then thinking about what can you write, of course, and and then thinking of like not having a lot of um, a lot of people that I know or bands that I know or artists that do that actually uh, as a women, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I mean uh, women in metal bands. But maybe I'm not well informed. But I, I felt it was like a well a special song. I felt like it's nice to have. What if women, you know. Um, yeah, take their own spot in that in that interaction with men, but then really dominate the men instead of they feel sometimes like, you know, men are physically, of course, way uh, stronger than women are. And what if it would be turned around, if we would treat men like they treat us sometimes, like, right. you know, and play a little bit with a fun way, not like, to, don't take it too seriously. I'm not, not bashing yeah, yeah. men, I love men, of course. And that's also what the song is about. But yes, you know, uh, just play around with that thought. And also the video, we love Halloween, for instance, and we love, we've always wanted to make a Halloween kind of song and maybe mm -hmm. a video. And this was 
came cl closest to it. So it became right. a vampire Halloween slayer party, to my opinion, and which I think Canada and America can really relate to. <laughs> because <laughs> it's a big tradition, I think. And it's getting bigger here as well. And it's something that we always admired and we're a bit jealous of as here from the Netherlands. Like, oh my God, it must be great to do that. Instead yeah, of the yeah. Santa Claus kind of stuff. And um, yeah, anyway, but uh, yeah, that's what it's inspired by. And uh, of course, we do address certain topics, uh, again, like the soccer, uh, you know, trainer kissing one of the players on her mouth, Yeah, uh, which was, of course, something that happened recently. Um, it was just nice to take something that happened just recently into the video as we were working at it. So, yeah, yeah, but again, yeah. don't take it too seriously. It's not like bashing men, but it's just yeah, fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take it a little bit lighter because this song is way lighter than the rest of the topics, to my personal opinion. And, um, which feels also a little bit like the dust from Dust Till Dawn kind of um, script because halfway the movie and you know the whole storyline turns around as well, just like our album does actually. But then, of course, it's just one song and then it goes on with heavy topics again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I won't, uh, I, I, I won't go deeper on like you know women in metal and what and that and this and that. I know that you're sick and no. tired of that stuff. But so now that you <laughs> mention that you like Halloween, Halloween is Tuesday, as we're talking. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, yeah. I know. And you're right, you know, uh, I know it's becoming a bigger thing, you know, back home uh, uh, in, in Belgium and Netherlands. So the dress up holiday has always been more carnival or uh, yeah, you know, sli it's, slightly it's different, really less like. scary. <laughs> 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 but so yeah, are you doing carnival. anything on Tuesday? Like, is it just like, oh, we have to watch a scary movie or are you going to well, do something? Actually, it's been around here for two weeks already, like. In weekends, we have like uh, amusement parks completely in Halloween nowadays. Right, right. So probably in the weekend, during the week, nothing's happening over here. It's raining this week as well, so I don't, I won't be able to see anyone or my kids running around in anything ghosty or uh, uh, yeah, pumping the pumpkin like. But uh, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, but in the weekend, we we'll probably go to an amusement park where they, you know, can go all wild because they love the, the whole. That whole atmosphere. There's obviously, you know, when there's new music, there's going to be new shows and they're going to be big and they're going to be epic and they're going to be crazier than we can imagine. Um, so as an indie band now, is that also a very different muscle for you guys or is that similar, that planning process? And just really, what can we expect? What should we keep our eyes open for? <laughs> well, uh, of course, we're gonna. Well, that's the thing that we're gonna do after all this promotion is done, is uh, work on uh, all the specs that we're gonna get from all the venues, because uh, of course the size of venues they differ, uh, are different from each other, and uh, we all have to fit it, make it fit on a basically similar kind of uh, um, stage. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to take a long while and also in the meantime thinking with a whole creative uh, team about especially Robert's going to come uh, come up with, uh, with ideas again because it's really his child. Um, he does it. He's done it, this actually on his own uh, for many years, but then together with a team that he collected around him. You know, and, right. um, so we're going to work on that. I'm going to help him this time also because, well, uh, as there's not much to do and I love to, to be involved in these kind of things as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to sit on that, but it's going to take like, it takes as much time as an album almost because it goes months and months going back and forth. No, we're going to do this. Oh, no, it's not possible because, or we, yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, we have to find the right company to do that. And you have work with different companies. It's a, it's a very yeah technical thing as well and to a certain For degree. Sure. But we, we just want to have everything, of course, uh, blown up again. And uh, <laughs> like you said, big and epic, like we did the last show. And, yeah. But it's going to be, uh, maybe I'm going to let the boys fly because every show they let me go up and I'm so afraid of heights. And, and every time I'm swinging on some swing or they have me, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going up in the air on some, you know, belts and stuff like that. So it's like, <laughs> I'm glad if I can keep my both feet on the ground this time. I mean, as a fan, I hope you'll fly around like crazy. But now that I know that you don't, <laughs> probably I will. Probably you I don't will. like that stuff too much. Maybe all the, you know, why don't the band fly and you stay on the stage? You know, I think it's amazing there. That's uh... there you go. 
<laughs> it would be so much fun that there's like this whole thing coming down and they strap you in and then like by way of surprise one of the guitar players just flies away <laughs> and <everybody's> like, <laughs> anyway, yeah, anyway. That's what they call the, the spinal tap effect i think <laughs> exactly 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 awesome well i, I obviously away a little bit from that <laughs> exactly I, I i wish you a great tour with few spinal tap moments you'll have some that's always going oh, to we happen we most definitely had them oh. i promise you there will exactly. be a one day a documentary about it <laughs> exactly that that will be featured in the wooden temptation museum you know curated by your mom um while we all have uh, uh wooden temptation ornaments for our christmas tree soon <laughs> so, um, thank you so much for your time i really do appreciate it because i know how busy you are um have a wonderful time still promoting this album enjoy this release cycle i know it can be tedious but it's also really cool and um and seeing all the fans react to that and i cannot wait to see you on a stage again, whether that's here in North America or back home in Europe, um, uh, it, it doesn't matter. We'll see you there. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you and happy Halloween. <laughs> yes, happy Halloween. <laughs> You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.